So welcome to the stage, Stephen, Tamara, and Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. We want to make the case today, the business case for meeting ROI. And you need a way to benchmark and track your progress so that you can report the results of what you do, your value as a meeting professional. And it doesn't matter if you're a planner or a supplier. Now, some people would argue you really, you really can't define ROI because there are too many unknowns. Well. Let's, uh, let's talk about the unknowns. What's the ROI of your phone? Think about it. Connectivity, <coughs> speed, it enlarges your geographic area, it creates ease of use with your customers. So there's an ROI to your phone that you probably don't think about. What's the ROI of your pants? <laughs> You wouldn't tear up and burn your pants because you don't know how much money they make for you, would you? So it can't just be about the bottom line. And finally, what's the ROI of your mom? Your mom raised you to be the person you are. She taught you your, your very first important lessons about ethics and honor and being a man or a woman. She was there for you when you woke up and had nightmares. She was your, she was your, she was your champion, right? So what's the ROI of your mom? Priceless. And what we do in meetings and events has to be that priceless. It has to be that valuable. Meetings and events. Business. It's actually big business. Let me share a couple of statistics with you. And I'm, I am going to go with my notes just to make sure. Major League Baseball accounts for just under $2 billion as an industry. So $2 billion for Major League Baseball. Motion picture industry, $23 billion industry. Our industry, the one that we don't have a business plan for and the one that we're saying is so hard to define, we are a $122 billion industry. That's in North America alone. So if you don't take your job seriously, how do you expect the executives at your company, the C-suite folks, to take your job seriously? So when we talk about the bottom line, the bottom line is don't focus on the bottom line. It's real easy for us as planners, as suppliers, anyone in the industry really, it's real easy for us to create a budget and talk money. Now I can guarantee you if all I'm doing is talking about cost savings or talking about money related to my events, to my CEO, then I'm creating a behavior and I'm creating a mindset to him that now the value of that meeting is clearly only about money. And we could have a very successful event. We can impact people with education and training. We can, we can develop and, um, and go in and do community efforts in areas and just be successful. But if that budget got busted because of that meeting, then now all of a sudden I've set myself up for failure. So it's not about the money. Now the money's important, and we're going to talk about that, but I encourage you, never lead with the money. Let it be part of your plan, but never let it be the key to your plan. Mythbuster. Guess what, y'all? In your quest for the Holy Grail, <laughs> there is no magic bullet. There's no magic diet pill. I'm not going to be skinny overnight. There's, just, there's no way to measure your meetings and events all in in one simple way. What you have to know is that it's your responsibility to figure out who do you serve and then what are the needs that you need to meet and then how are you going to move on. And again, if you are only focused on the dollars, then you will have lost because let's face it, if we were only putting on meetings and events because of money, we never would because I don't know about you, but I've been in the arena where most of my events are cost center. You know, so we want to make sure that we're showing value. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you will demonstrate the results from your seat at the table. Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Thanks, Tamara. Okay, so I'm going to bust myth, num myth number two, or I'm going to attempt to, <laughs> and that is that ROI cannot be calculated because there are too many unknowns to measure. And I would say that that's true for some things, meaning if, it, if you're just going to focus on the metrics, as, as Tamara was saying, it should be the last thing you do. In many cases, if you're planning a sales meeting or if you're planning a distributor conference or a franchisees conference, it could, this, your meeting and event that you're planning could be the kickoff to that, but you may never see the results of that. That could go report back to your C-suite, that could report back into the business, and you don't know how, what the end result was of that meeting. If, However, there are some knowns that every meeting and event has. So at VWV, we created something called an emotional response graph. And um, we refer to it as the ERG. It basically reduces an experience or a meeting and event down to a two axis graph time and emotion. And why does it say emotion? Because you need to inspire emotion in somebody or ignite emotion in somebody so that you get a positive or a strong reaction. So that you increase sales or that you get the distributor body to go and work for you or a franchisees group or your internal group. You want to inspire emotion in them. The time is the length of time that, ha that goes into it or the information that's being done. So basically you have information and you have inspiration. We've all sat through these meetings and hopefully you're not sitting through one now. <laughs> that's, all, that's all information only and not any inspiration. Uh, can be a bit difficult to sit through. By contrast, we've probably all, many of you have been to a rock concert or a concert or a football game or a basketball game. That's gonna have a lot of emotion related to the amount of time that's there. There's one up there. So all of us in the room and at VWV when we approach these, when we're, we approach it to find the right balance between between the two. So you can see that there are spikes and there's dips. The guest speaker didn't do very good. The, actually, the sales results in this particular conference, the EVP of sales thought was going to do really bad and it ended up spiking the thing. The point is, is that we consider this successful. All of those things aside, it built its way to a crescendo. It built its way to a strong ending. And it's, this map is undeniable. So if you put this in front of somebody in a C-suite or a speaker, and they know you've got the data to back it up, they don't want to dig through those surveys. You know they don't. Every suite I've ever said never reads the surveys, never looks at the verbatims. They don't do it. We have to do it for them. So we do it for them. And this is the one way you can present it to them. First of all, it shows them what success looks like. It's black and white. You have data to back it up. You have experience to back it up. You can tell them that. It shows an increase in engagement in specific areas. It also helps them determine, well, maybe that makes sense in the event, or maybe it shows a dip and it says, you know what, that needs to be dumped from, the, from that particular event or meeting or event or maybe the general session or whatever. It allows you to decide. It also may, helps you to decide where things should fall. In, a, in an overall meeting and event or down to that specific moment. Because they need the response. The response that increases sales, generates brand equity, engages the sales team. So when you plan an event, a meeting or event, measure the response, measure the experience. ROI has been around for a long time. The first MPI ROI sum summit was 17 years ago. There's been certifications, there's been meetings, there's been white papers. Nothing has changed in 17 years. We just gotten lazy. We defaulted to what was easy. We said, as Tamara pointed out, well, I can show you what the meeting costs. So no wonder a whole level of people on a C-suite level, executives and organizations, suppliers and planners, think that we're a bot it's all about the bottom line. So we purposely busted this myth and put it last. Metrics is not ROI. Yes, metrics are important. They, you want to gauge purchase and reach and cost. And you need to do that. But benchmark those metrics against the experience and the engagement that Kelly was just talking about. That's ROI, not numbers. So yes, there is an ROI to anything that proves value. And ladies and gentlemen sitting in this room, you, you are valuable. You are valuable to your organizations, to our industry. Tamara gave you the numbers. Go forth and measure. Take the pieces that are uniquely you, unique about your business, benchmark them. Create engaging experiences. Measure that response. And I'll follow this up by saying, when you leave here today, if MPI DFW is consistent as they always are, I'll bet tomorrow 
you're going to get an evaluation. And I'll bet if you're like most people who attend meetings and events, you will ignore that email. <laughs> I'm going to challenge you to do something this chapter's never done. I don't know how many of you are here. It looks like, looks, looks like a full house, Amanda. I want every one of you to commit to filling out that evaluation tomorrow. We mapped, we mapped today's program. We have an idea of what it looks like. We'd like to know what it really is. So tomorrow when that email comes, take the five minutes out of your very busy life, fill that thing out, every line, and tell us what you like, what you didn't like, how I had to come at the end and save Kelly because it dipped <laughs> during his response. <laughs> tell us that. Go forth and measure. Thank you for your time today.